Do you believe in magic? In a young girl's heart? A summer nugget man. Hey, welcome to BAM! Yes. Hey, if you're new to BAM, it goes like this. You guys submit art, we guys redraw the art. Yeah, as if it was like a real animated show. It's like educational show, like Bob Ross. If you had a tablet. And he drew Tumblr art. <laughs> um... Well, we got this really interesting piece from Megan about five months ago, and I think we've always wanted to make an episode about it. My dream in life is to actually write for animation and hopefully make my own cartoon one day. But my art is really poor compared to my writing skill. Hence why I'm taking screenwriting rather than animation. Enclosed are two drawings, one of Mayura, ginger hair, and one of Diamond, silver hair. Sort of like a magical girl, but with less sparkles. So this character turns into this character. Oh, like an alter ego. Yeah, it's like the perfect design for us to explain character turnarounds with. A turnaround is one of those most foundational elements of character design, and you really need to do them so that you can figure out what all the angles of your character looks like. So let's turn both of them and make a transformation sequence that would be in Megan's show. We're gonna be making an eight point turnaround. This is standard for the animation industry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Character turnarounds are gonna be 80% of your job on a real production, and even professionals struggle doing these correctly. Nowadays, turnarounds have to be extremely precise because you're making an animatable puppet. A character puppet is a rig of the turnaround. Modern animation programs utilize many cool features that make animation faster. For instance, elbow, neck, and knee joints can be hinged, and you can make a library of blink cycles, mouth shapes, hand poses, that are built right into the rig. Lots of hand-drawn animation is still needed, like for crazy poses and odd angles, but the rig allows you to animate simple scenes much faster than with traditional animation. Puppet animation done in Harmony or Flash can be completed faster, cheaper, and can be easily edited, unlike hand-drawn animation. Today, we're gonna teach you how to take the three-quarter front drawing of your character and create the necessary remaining drawings to make an accurate turnaround. A turnaround that animates well and can be used to make a character build. A turn like this will work great for both puppeted animation and traditional animation. Three-quarter front pose is the most important pose in animation. All acting is done in the three-quarter front. It's basically the animation equivalent of a stage actor cheating towards the audience. When Brent and I have a real conversation, we face each other in profile, like this. But when we cheat, we move our heads out so both our eyeballs are visible to you. Our eyes are more visible, so our emotions are more visible. Megan did an awesome three-quarter front here. Oh, it's so good. We're gonna adjust your proportions a bit and bring her head size down. Less like a Bratz doll? Yeah, I mean, those really give girls like an unrealistic beauty standard. I mean, who has a head that big? My head is not that big and it gives me body shame. Okay, this is a cute looking three quarter front. Ah. Here is where most beginner artists make a mistake. They just take the three quarter front, move it over and try to eyeball the other seven poses. This is inefficient and will lead to a lot of proportion mistakes when you actually animate the turn. The drawings just won't hook up. Real animation uses a technique called onion skinning. This is where you can see the previous drawings in low opacity, allowing you to sync up the details much more precisely. We're gonna use this technique to design our turn. Let's draw all of the poses on top of each other and let's make some guides for the access of rotation. For this particular character, I'm gonna make that her neck. On a fresh layer, I'm gonna draw a straight vertical line down both sides of her neck, and a third line in a new color dead center of these lines. Now, every pose I draw, I can line up in the position of her neck. Draw some horizontal guides for the obvious things that need to be lined up horizontally. Top of the head, bottom of the feet, eye line, shoulders, waist, chin, mouth. It's helpful to make these all different colors. Now let's copy the three quarter front and place it over here for reference. Okay, now set up both of these guide layers to multiply and let's get our other poses going. Now let's design the front pose. Everything on the front pose should be slightly further apart than the three quarter pose. This makes sense if you think about each pose as a rectangle in perspective. The front pose should be straight on, then the three quarter front should be like this and profile like this. See how the shape gets skinnier as it turns? As a very general rule, human characters are widest at their front and thinnest at their profile. You can easily mark this on your guide layer. Spend some time comparing your three quarter pose, flip back and forth between these two poses and just do your best. We'll make it perfect later on. 
So we're doing the back pose now because it's very similar to the front pose. Turn the opacity down and spend a minute figuring out how the front pose would look from the very back. The silhouette is gonna be very similar, but small things are gonna change. The feet are now going away from us, so they're going to change perspective. You should have three poses now. Now let's draw the profile, which is a key pose. The whole turnaround is anchored to these poses. They describe the mass in an orthographic way. The three-quarter poses are basically in-betweens. They're a lot easier to do once you have the front, rear, and profile poses set up. When creating a profile pose, some parts of your drawing will stick out a lot more and some parts will retract. For instance, the curve of her breast will reach the peak distance away from the axis of rotation. But the shoulders will now be almost non-existent because they're facing the audience dead on. Watch where you place the arms here. Make sure you can still see the back a little bit. By the way, the human spine is shaped like this. This character is a cute design, so we're going to emphasize that and tilt her pelvis forward. The profile face is a difficult part. It's helpful to think about a real skull. You don't really see the full eyeball from the profile, you just see half of it. And the mouth might have an overbite, an underbite, a strong chin, or a weak chin. Pay attention to your design details to maintain the likeness. Here's an important concept I want to teach. If your character is symmetrical, opposite profiles have the same silhouette, opposite fronts have the same silhouette. However, three-quarter poses do not have the same silhouette. If you try and match these two poses, your drawing is going to look pretty weird. But why is that? These three-quarter boxes have the same silhouette. It makes total sense. Well, humans are not Minecraft characters. We have very complicated bones that have evolved over hundreds of years. I mean, they were designed by Jesus after he wiped out the dinosaurs. Anyway, gravity. Gravity has been pulling down on our spines, causing the pelvis to shift either forward or backwards. Let's look at that rectangle again. If this rectangle had a belt, the belt line will be in the same place the entire rotation. But if we tilt the belt forward, it's going to be a different drawing on each side. The spine points towards you and bends upward in the three-quarter front, so the belt line should curve like this. The spine points away from you and folds downward in the three-quarter rear, so the belt line should curve like this. This will make the profile a diagonal line, like this. Looking good. Okay, for a complete turn, there's eight poses total, but for a symmetrical character, you can get away with only drawing five drawings, just like we've done so far. The front, the three-quarter front, the profile, the three-quarter rear, and the back. These three poses can be flipped to the other side, like this, completing the total eight. So honestly, you only need five good drawings to do a standard turn. Sweet. So let's grab these layers, copy them, and mirror them horizontally from the center line on the guide. We're done. I got all the poses stacked on top of each other, and they're on the center of the rotation. Now, let's animate this using the Photoshop timeline. First, put all these poses into separate folders. Label the front pose folder one, and keep foldering and labeling all the way to pose eight. Then go to Window, Timeline, Create Frame Animation. And set your first frame to 0.2 seconds. Great. Now let's turn off the visibility of all folders except for folder one and use this button to make a total of eight frames. On each frame, turn off visibility for all folders except the one corresponding with the pose number. Hmm. That's it? Wow, a lot easier than I thought. Now just press play. That's looking pretty good. Now that I can see it all moving, I can see what's not working correctly. I'm looking for popping and shifting shapes in this animation. I'm gonna do a second pass now and smooth these things out. Now guys, the Photoshop timeline is notoriously buggy, but since I made folders, I can add layers inside each folder, adjust the drawings, and it won't mess it up. Yeah, and when it comes time to do cleanup, I'm gonna do it inside the folders and delete the rough layers. All right, have a look at my first pass, and now have a look at my last pass after I fixed all my mistakes. Looking a lot better. If you feel so inclined, you can in between these guys and turn your 8 point turn into a 16 point turn. 16 frames will really make it look smooth. When you feel good about this, you can make a GIF by choosing File, Export, and Save for Web. Now, GIFs are actually small files, so lower your image size before you're exporting it to make it for web. This is looking really sweet, Brent. Now, since animation is a 2D medium, you shouldn't strive to make your elements 100% accurate to 3D. 
Some of it is 2D cheats, like Mickey Mouse's ears. Uh, Mickey's ears aren't really 3D. They're just 2D plates, and they drift down the side of his head like this. That's why Mickey doesn't look right in a lot of 3D games. Lots of characters work like that. A cheat I'm using is for this character's nose. See how her nose is just a dot from the front, and it kind of morphs into a point at the profile? That's a famous cheat that a lot of anime use. Now I'm gonna turn this over to Brent for compositing. I'm gonna use After Effects to composite all of this together. First, I exported all the frames as PNGs from Photoshop. Then import into After Effects as image sequences. Place all of the image sequences on top of each other and then line up the animation. Using an animated mask, I created a transition between the three turns. I masked out the nude silhouette turnaround and had it reveal slowly before popping into the diamond version. I got some glowy rainbow footage and then put it on top of our nude silhouette and set it to track mat. That way it fills in the character and nothing else. That's the After Effects equivalent of a Photoshop clipping mask. To tie it all together, I added some glow effects from the effects rack here and then some white flashes. And for the background, I made a new solid color and applied some After Effects particle simulation systems. I honestly just picked a few of these and played around with the settings until I got something that looked nice. I actually didn't even have to hand animate anything. <laughs> Then I just animated a single star shooting out from her and copied and rotated the animation a few times. This is what's so great about After Effects. You can just make one animated movement and copy and paste it in between objects and shapes. Yes, really easy. That is looking seamless. Dude, these effects look really impressive, but it's only because the turnaround is done so well. A lot of times After Effects is just really the last like 10%. The cherry on top. Great teamwork, Brent. Dude, thank yeah, you, man. Yeah, I think that every part of this really adds to the cute, bubbly, magical girl aesthetic that we were going for. From the character design, to the turnaround, the effects animation, the color palette, and the music now. It, it's working really well. Wait, what? I said send your art um, to bam.redrawmyart at gmail.com. That's right. Send your art. Guys. Send your art.